Leviticus. Go to, go to um, the third book of Moses. Leviticus, the third book of the Pentateuch. Leviticus chapter number 19. Leviticus chapter number 19. For this special grandparents' day, thank you for standing once you have that. Those of you who can um, stand. Um, Leviticus chapter number 19. Amen. Glory to God. Um, yeah, don't act like you can't stand. I saw y'all at that game this weekend. <laughs> Amen. Leviticus chapter 19. I'm only going to read one verse. Verse number 32. Leviticus 19, 32. New King James Version reads like this. You shall rise before the gray-headed and honor the presence of an old man and fear your God. I am the Lord. Father, we thank you. Use this moment. Do, only with, do with it only what you can. God, you be glorified. Prepare our hearts, our minds to hear what you're saying to this church. Father, we thank you today, and we give you glory. Bless us and keep us in Jesus' name. Before you sit down, do me a favor and tell everybody in this room what my grandmother preached to me for over 20 years before she passed away. Will you fist bump three people and tell them simply, respect your elders. Respect. Respect your elders. Yeah, res respect your elders. Yeah, re tell them respect. Respect your elders. Re respect. Respect your elders. Respect your elders. <laughs> Res respect. <laughs> Sister Betty said, respect us now. Respect. Yeah, respect your elders. Respect your elders. Amen. Amen. We, we live in a culture and a time when respect has become relative. We live in a time when respect doesn't look the same today as it did 40 years ago. Respect looks different now. I grew up in a time when respecting your elders, that was the phrase of the day. A time when kids didn't watch grown people talk. Look like I got some help in this house today. Older people in those days would have called it looking in my mouth. Y'all act like y'all grew up in Mississippi. That's a Texas thing, too. <laughs> there, was a, there was a huge respect principle um, that, was the, that was the catchphrase of the day, respect was huge. You didn't interrupt grown folk when they were talking. If you had to go to the bathroom, you better hold it until they, until they looked at you sitting there shaking. And then they asked you, what's wrong with you? <laughs> that was just a huge respect. Huge respect for elders, huge respect for elders in those days. That, that, was, that was a time when, uh, a time when if two grown folks were talking, kids didn't walk between. Woo, I'm getting flashbacks. If two adults were talking, that was an invisible force field. There was a trip wire that was between them. If a kid walked through that force field, all of a sudden, one of the adults the, the one that was ex most experienced in backhandology 
I'm, I'm talking about the one that had the PhD in backhandology. See, y'all young folks don't understand anything about what I'm talking about. But there are some people in this room, they know exactly what I'm saying. You didn't, you didn't come across that threshold. You came across that threshold, you was going to get snatched up. If you didn't get a backhand, you were going to get snatched in the back of your shirt and you're going to get drugged back to the other side. Nowadays, kids will walk right through you while you're talking. You have to stop them. Hey, 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 come back here. They come back looking like, what what I do? Did you see us talking? Kids nowadays will say, yeah, <laughs> so what? We've got to get back to that time when respecting our elders becomes a real thing. You know what that means? That means that we've got to start teaching it. Now, I thank God, I thank God that in the book of Exodus, it is when God's children, Israel, um, were coming out of Egypt and God was establishing Egypt as a nation, establishing them as his very own people. God has put his blessing on this group of people. Then they're in the wilderness now. They're established. They're breaking up into tribes and God now was established them he's put his blessing on them and in the book of Leviticus the book of the the Levites the book of the law what God does now is he begins to establish covenant he begins to establish the law and what he's establishing now he's helping them to understand how they are to worship how they are to serve and how they are to obey the holy God I like it because he puts a lot of ceremonial law. We, we know things like uh, there are sin offerings and grain offerings. And he teaches them how they should enter the temple. He teaches them how they should give sacrifices. He teaches them what they should do if an animal dies. What they should do uh, if, if, if they come in contact with spilled blood or mingled blood. He's teaching them how to handle uh, carcasses. And he's teaching them all this, all the ritualistic law. But I thank God that one of the laws that he put in there was Leviticus 19.32 and one of the laws he said is the law of respect. Glory to God. He says in Levitical law, he says what you need to do, what I want you to do is I want to make sure that you understand that this is a law and it's something that I need you guys to remember. He said you shall rise before the gray-headed. Can I tell you something? I know, I know, I know there's a lot of stuff out there that's trying to get you to slow, that, slow down the aging process. All kind of stuff. Try to help us slow down the process. They got spray paint. Got all these masks that you put on your face. All this polish and all this stuff. And they got pills and serums and all kinds of stuff that you that they try to give you to, uh, to try to slow down the process. They got some charcoal now that you can cover up ball spots. All types of dyes and people are trying to cover up the grays, but here's what the Bible says. No, no, no. Here's what, here's, let me say this to all of you. Here's what I'm saying to all of you. Listen, learn how to grow old gracefully. Oh, learn how to grow old gracefully. Growing old isn't something to be dreaded. It's something to be embraced. Glory to God. Because there's an honor that comes with age. There's a wisdom that comes with age. Glory to God. Listen, if you can't walk up in a restaurant and say, I want the senior citizen discount. If you don't have your AARP card yet, you still a baby. You just a baby. All kinds of stuff. Learn how to just grow old. Grow old gracefully. Here's what the Bible says. God said to Moses, he said, I want you to teach the children of Israel that they are to honor the aged. 
You honor those when he said you honor them so much so that when you when they walk in, you stand up. Glory to God. You stand up because wisdom just walked in the room. You got to know that for a person to get 70 and 80 years old, you got to know that they've gone through some stuff in their lives. You got to know they've gone through some stuff. They've learned some stuff. If you sit down and talk to them, they could teach you something. Glory to God. Glory to God. They could teach you something if you would sit down and take the time to listen to them. He said, stand before the gray-headed and, and in the presence of old man. And he says, and fear your God. In other words, if you don't do it, you got to deal with me. That's what God is saying. If you don't do it, you have to deal with me. That's what we got to teach our young people to respect grandmother and respect granddaddy and respect their elders. We got to teach it and we've got to mandate it because if we don't, man, they got to deal with God. You got to teach your kids how to say yes, ma'am, and yes, sir, and no, ma'am, and no, sir. We need to get back to doing yes, ma'ams, and no, ma'ams, and yes, sir, and no, sir. We get them in time now where kids will say what? Could you imagine, those of you old enough to understand, could you imagine looking at your grandma and said, bruh. Come on, bruh, you tripping. Can you imagine? I'm scared to say that now with my, my grandma and the grand. I still won't hear me say that. Kids nowadays call their parents, bruh. What you mean, bruh? Bruh. Man, you tripping. Can you imagine? Y'all feel that fear in your heart, those who grew up in that generation, you feel that? You know what would happen to you? What, what would happen, Miss Sister Betty? Show them what would happen. That backhand, that backhand ministry. But we've got to get back to teaching our children the importance of honor. First Timothy 5, 1 Timothy 5.1, you will see it on the screen. The living version says, never speak sharply to an older man. But plead with him respectfully, just as though he were your own father. Here's what it's saying. Here's what it's saying. The aged men in the room, when you encounter them, you encounter them as you would a father. And you respect them as if you would your own daddy. So when you see the aged men and you, you embrace them and you love on them and you, and you do that as if they are your own father. And he says, he's, and this is New Testament where God is telling Timothy, Paul is telling Timothy, he says, in the church, make sure that, that honor is being demonstrated in the church. That's why, we take a, that's why we take time to honor those who honor is due. We take time to, to show spe pe the special people just how special they are. What's this? He, he didn't stop there. He says, he says, talk to the younger men as if you would a much loved brother. He says, he says, honor should be such in the church that the young men see each other as brothers. Amen. We don't see each other. We're not competing against each other. Man, we're brothers. I thank God for the L5 ministry. Thank God for the men who come together. Thank God for the men we, we met this weekend. We met this weekend. I was so glad to see the men that came out. Is Hightower in here? Is Hightower in here? I hope Hightower is watching. Hightower, man, he, he, he showed up. He took time off to come to the meeting. His first name is Calvin, but his last name is Hightower. We all call him. You know a joker had to be bad. When you call him by his last name. But thank God for the men who came out and the men who were connected. Now, wait a minute. Verse number two in 1 Timothy chapter five says, treat the older women as mothers. So the older women um, that are in the church, the older women that are around us, here's what the Bible says, treat them as mothers. You know what that means? That means when you see them, you got to go to them. That mother, you need anything. Can I help you? Do, when, when they're getting out the car, thank God. Now give our parking team a round of applause. Give our parking team a hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A parking team do an amazing job, man. When you get out the car, they're going to come see about you. Yes, see if there's something they can do for you. How can we help you? Thank God for the men who are on our team. Thank God for the men and women who serve because they understand the principle of honor. And honor is a big around here. We want to make sure that we do our job in giving honor where honor is due. Now, wait a minute. 
treat the older women as mothers and the girls as your sisters thinking read it again I didn't write it thinking only pure thoughts so here's what that means fellas she's your sister in the Lord you can't be fantasizing about her got quiet in here the opposite is also true he's your brother <laughs> if you keep looking straight ahead nobody will know <laughs> thinking only pure thoughts about them. You should text somebody right now who needs to hear that part right there. Thinking only pure thoughts about them. Why? Because honor has got to start in the house of the Lord. It's got to start here. We got to teach honor. We got to teach it. So that's what that means. When don't, don't treat the thought like it never came. Cast it down. I'm preaching better than y'all understand. There, there should be somebody shouting me down right now. Think I heard somebody say I'm in the word. Got one, got one witness. <laughs> Treat the older women as mothers, the young men as brothers, and the young ladies as sisters, thinking only pure thoughts. Only pure thoughts toward them. Glory to God. Four ways. To respect your grandparents. Four ways to respect your elders. Four ways, and then we're going to be out of the way. Four ways to respect your grandparents. Four ways to respect your elders. In 1 Samuel chapter number 3, a young boy by the name of Samuel was dropped off by his mother Hannah who prayed for him. Hannah prayed for a son, and God gave her a son by the name of Samuel. Samuel um, was a blessed kid. If you know anything about Samuel's life, he was a very blessed kid. Samuel is dropped off at the church, as it were, with the priest by the name of Eli. Hannah brings him to the church and says, I prayed that God would give me a son. God gave me this son. His name is Samuel. And I prayed and I, I told God that when God gave him to me, I was going to give him back to the Lord. She brought him to church, gave him to Eli, and says, Eli, now he is your responsibility. She loved on him and kissed him. I'm sure, they, I'm sure she cried to, to surrender her kid, but she gave him to the Lord. Now, as the story goes, Samuel was in the bed. The Bible says in that, in that particular chapter, the Bible talks about how uh, the voice of God was rare in those days, where there was no, uh, the visions of the Lord were rare in those days. God, while the boy Samuel was asleep, God calls Samuel in his sleep. Jesus says, Samuel, watch this. Samuel was a little boy. He was under the tutelage of the priest Eli. Samuel gets up out of his bed, walks over, walks down the hall or wherever they were. He goes to Eli's room and says, I am here. Eli says, what do you mean? He said, you call me. Eli said, no, I didn't call you. Go lay back down. Samuel says, okay. Samuel, the boy Samuel goes lay back down. He lays back down, drifts off sleep again. He hears the voice of the Lord again, call his name again. Samuel, he gets up. He goes in there back to where Eli was. He says, he says uh, Father, here am I. He says, what do you mean? He says, I heard you call me. Eli said, I didn't call you. Go lay back down. He goes and lay back down again. Sure enough, drifts off to sleep. The Lord calls him a third time. Calls him a third time. He gets up and he goes back to Eli's room. He says, he says, Father, you keep calling me. At this time, Eli recognized that it had to be the Lord. Eli tells him, he says, this time when you go lay back down, what I want you to say is, I want you to say, Lord, your servant heareth. Oh, your servant is here. Your servant is listening. Now watch this. Here is the beautiful part. Here's the beautiful part. Um, um, four ways to respect your grandparent. Number one, listen intently for them. Listen intently for them. Thank God for Samuel. Samuel 
He heard his name one time and he moved. I grew up in a time when grandparents didn't repeat themselves. <laughs> I grew up in a time that one time. I grew up in a time when they called your name. You better be on the move. Because if they had to come looking for you, it was going to be trouble. It was going to be smoke in the city if they had to come looking for you. Glory to God. But the boy Samuel, watch this, three times he heard his name once. He gets up every time and he goes and sees what Eli's want. So you know what that says to me? That says he's listening for his voice. What I'm saying to you is you've got grandparents in your life. You need to listen for their voice. Listen for their call. Listen for when they need you, when they need something. Don't make them have to keep asking you the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Listen for their voice. Listen intently for them. Number one, listen for them. Listen intently. If you want to respect your grandparents, listen for them. Tune your ears to their voice and you listen for them. Glory to God. There was a time also in 2 Samuel chapter 21 where David and his men go out to battle. David and his men go out to battle and, and David had gotten a little bit older by this time. In 2 Samuel chapter 21, the Bible says that, that David, David grew tired, he grew faint. Now, and that was a, that was a giant, he was a Philistine, Philistine giant, um, his name was, was Ishmi Benad. Ishmi Benad was actually the brother of Goliath. David killed Goliath when he was a little boy. Now David is an older man. Now Ishmi Benad, they're fighting, they're fighting the Philistines. Ishmi Benad knows that this is the man that killed my brother. Ishbi Benad sees that David is getting weak. He sees that David is tired. He goes and he tries to kill David. He takes out his sword. He's about to slay David. Now, there's another, uh, somebody on David's side named Abishai. Abishai runs over, sees what's about to happen. He comes in. He stands between David and Ishbi Benad, and he takes his sword, and he kills the giant in David's stead. The giant falls. Watch this. Then Abishai says to David, says to David, listen, we can't afford to lose you. So from now on, you're not going to fight in the battle. From now on, we got it. We're going to make sure that you are taken care of. The Bible says what he says to them is we cannot afford for the lamp of Israel to go out. We, you're too important to the family, David. You're too important to the lineage. You're too important to the household, David. We can't lose you. So we're going to fight this battle for you. Number one, listen intently for your grandparents. Listen intently for your elders. Here is number two, slowly assume battles for them. Slowly assume battles for them. My wife and I, we brought uh, her daddy into our house. We would go visit him. And when we visit him, we would, we would realize that, that there were certain things that started kind of lacking. We realized that he wasn't taking care. He couldn't take care of the yard the way he used to. And so, so we would go over many times and we'd go over and cut the yard. I would drag my mower up to his house and we'd go and cut the yard because that was a battle that we assumed for him. So as you're watching your grandparents and you're watching them and they're, as they are, and, and God is, is, is grooming and God is growing them, there are some things, there are some battles that they don't have to fight. They don't need, they don't need to fight anymore. There are some stuff that your children or your children's children should come along and say, Grandmama, we got this. Granddaddy, we got you. Granddaddy, you don't have to worry about this right here because we've got this. Glory to God. There are certain battles that you are to assume, that you are to assume for them so they don't have to keep fighting the same battles over and over and over again. We realized that my grandma, my father-in-law's health was failing. We brought him into our house and said, listen, you're not going to have to fight that battle. You're not going to fight that battle by yourself. We brought him into our home and we took care of him. Why? Because we, because we wanted to honor him in those days of his life. We want to make sure that we honor him. So we assumed some of those battles for him. We assumed some of those battles. So what I'm saying to you, if you're going to honor your parents and your grandparents, be prepared to assume some of those battles. 
some of the bills that they're having to fight off and, and some of the some of the taxes they may have to pay and just some of the some because because when you start to get older, creditors and, and people all the all the spam calls start coming. You can say, Grandmama, look, give me your phone. We're gonna make sure you don't have to fight that battle. We're gonna assume, we're gonna assume that battle for you. We're going to assume that battle. So that's exactly, that's exactly what Abishai does for David. He says, we are going to assume that battle. Number one, listen intently for them. Number two, slowly assume battles for them. In the book of Ruth, glory to God, the book of Ruth, Ruth says to her mother-in-law, Naomi, she says to her, entreat me not to leave you or to turn back from following you. For wherever you go, I go. Wherever you lodge, I'll lodge. Your people shall be my people. Your God shall be my God. What she says to him, now listen, uh, here's what happens. Naomi had, had some sons. Both of her sons died. Then her, her husband died. Naomi, is a, she's, a, she's a widow indeed. Her daughter-in-law decided to stay with her. One daughter, Orpha, decided to go back home. But here is Ruth. Ruth says, Mama, I'm, 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 I'm going to rock with you. Here's what grandparents sometimes say. Grandparents sometimes say, I don't want to be a burden on anybody. When I get old, y'all just put me in a home and just come check on me every now and then. Make sure I got some good warm socks for my, my feet get cold. And here's what we say. We don't want, yeah, we don't, we don't want anybody. We don't want to be a burden on anybody. Now, listen, I understand what you mean. But everybody needs somebody in their life to say, no, mama, we got you. No, granddaddy, we got you. We got, no, no, no. Get granddaddy where you go, I go. Granddaddy, where you stay, I stay. Your people are my people. Everybody needs somebody in their lives that say, I got you no matter what happens to you. I got you. I, I, I've got you. No matter, no matter what happens in your life, no matter what goes on, the ebbs and flows, the ups and downs, I need you to know that I'm standing with you. Number one, if you want to respect your grandparents, listen intently for them. Number two, slowly assume battles for them. Number three, here's the big one, reaffirm your loyalty to them. Reaffirm your loyalty to them. They need to know that because, because they, not, they may not tell you. They may not tell you. But as you get older, as you, when you get older, your priorities change when you get older. When you get older, your priorities change. Listen, when you were young, you wanted to travel and you wanted to go see stuff. When you get older, you, know, you want to be at the house. You don't want to go to the fair. You're not even, you don't want to get in a teacup. I don't want to get in a teacup. When you get older, your priorities change. Place you used to go, man, you don't want to go there anymore. As a matter of fact, they, we won't tell you this, but when you get older, man, driving at night become a little different. Driving at night become a little different. We don't want to tell you this, but that's sometimes when you get older, you'll be driving, boy, you'll be, for, you'll be forgot where you're going. We don't like to admit it. Now, some of y'all young folk wrestle with this too. Listen, listen, listen. You, you, you know when you're having a senior moment. Here's how you know. When you walk in a room and stop. neighbor what you asking yourself right now what in the world did I come in here what did I come in here for what did I come in here you ever done this where my glasses at See my glasses. <laughs> the people who are laughing know exactly what I'm talking about. Them the ones know what I'm talking about. 
<laughs> God, where you put your keys? I know I just had them keys. I just had them keys. Where them keys at? I know I just had them keys. We don't like to admit it, but we, man, we need each other. We need each other. The old need the young, but guess what? The young need the old too. We need each other. We need each other. So you got to reaffirm, reaffirm that loyalty. Because, because when you start to get older, there's a different fear. There's a different fear that, that starts to manifest. That's a different fear. Now, some things you don't worry about no more. When you get old, yeah, you don't worry about it. So when you get to a certain age, you just speak your mind. You just say what's on your mind. At a certain age, you don't care no more. You just going to say it. You say it, yeah. <laughs> so you don't, you, don't worry about, you don't worry about hurting people's feelings. You just, yeah, I'm just going to tell you the truth, baby. I, I, I'm got too old to be playing with you. I'm just going to tell you. I'm just going to tell you. I'm going to tell you what the Lord loves. That's how, that's how we cover it. We, I'm going to tell you what the Lord loves. <laughs> <laughs> that means we about to hurt your feelings with Jesus' joy. That's all that means. <laughs> but if you have grandparents in your life, I, my, all my grandparents are deceased, but if you got grandparents in your life, man, reaffirm your loyalty to them. You, you ought to t you take your phone out and, and at some point today and you text your grandparents and say, Grandma, I got you. Great granddaddy, grand granddad, I got you. Granddad, if you need anything, granddad, I I got you. Just call me. Just call me. We're gonna we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna work it out. We're gonna work it out. Because because they need to know. They need to know that you uh, imagine, imagine how Naomi must have felt knowing that she had at least one person. Because glory to God, young people, you are the strength of your grandparents. You are their strength. When, when your grandparents see you show up, man, there's a joy that rises up in them. Glory to God. There's a joy. Hallelujah. My grandmama, Lainey Bryant Love, used to tell me this. She said, baby, she said, Every, anything you can do to help grandmama, you help grandmama. I would try to help her get out the car. Now, I wasn't big enough to hold her. But, but she said, baby, you come help grandmama. And we go over to the car. And we open the door for grandmama. And, we, and you know, and I, I think she was kind of putting on a little bit. And she put her arm out there. And we grab her arm. And we be helping grandmama out the car. And she said, yeah, baby, you help grandma. I wonder this tall. <laughs> she said, yeah, baby, you help grandmama. You help grandmama. And, and, and what, what she did was she taught me how to serve her. She taught me how to help her. She taught me how to do that. And so, and so if you have grandparents, if you have elderly parents or grandparents, man, reaffirm your loyalty to them. Let them know because, because they're, at that, they're at that point. They're at that, some, some of them are at that point, man, where they're trying to figure out how they're going to spend their last years. How they're going to spend those last years. And they need to know. They need to know that they're going to be taken care of. They need to know that. Glory to God. As a matter of fact, Psalm 90 and 10 says the days of our years are three score years and 10. A score is 20, 20, 40, 60, and 10 is 70. So in other words, he says, he says uh, when you reach 70 years, man, man, you, you're blessed to reach 70 years. And he says by reason of strength, they become four score. By reason of strength, man, you can reach way out there to 80. And so what he's saying is, is that, is that when, when you get to that age of your life, man, you, you need to know that you are, you are at a place in your life where your life is golden. You're at a place where your life is golden. Your life is golden, and there is so much wisdom. There is so much wisdom. So much wisdom in you. Here's what I encourage you to do. I encourage you, if you haven't, if you haven't, this is not in my notes. I'm going to give this to y'all. And y'all look at me. Look at me. Purpose. If you haven't done this yet, please do this for me and do it for you. The one regret that I have with my grandparents, one regret, is that I did not set up a recorder. I did not set up a video recorder 
or even a voice recorder and record the wisdom that they gave. I wish, I, I'm, and thinking back now, I wish I'd have done an interview with my grandmother. I wish I'd done an interview with her, and I wish I'd set up a camcorder or, or a recorder. I wish I'd have set one up and sat down with my grandmother and just let her talk. And just let her talk. Let her tell me about my, tell me about my, 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 in, uh, my, my family on, on her side, the family on my granddaddy's side. I wish I'd have just, I wish I'd just let her just talk. Talk about the things she had to endure, the things that she went through in her life. I wish I'd have just took some time to just let her talk and just record it. And so, so that when I need encouragement, I could just go back and listen to the wisdom that she gave. I wish I had sat down with my grandfather and just set up an interview with him and just sat down and just let my granddaddy just talk. So what I'm saying to you, for some of you, it's too late. But for, for some of you, it's not too late. I know that maybe your relationship with your grandparents is not, not the best. I get it. And maybe your relationship with your grandparents or some of your elderly parents, maybe it's a little bit strained, but I promise you if you do it, when you get to where I am, where your parents, grandparents, where all those are gone, man, you'll be glad you did. You'll be glad you took some time and got that wisdom. You'll be glad you got that wisdom from them. Number one, listen intently for them. Number two, slowly assume battles for them. Number three, reaffirm your loyalty to them. And here is number four. And lastly, pray faithfully for them. Pray for them. Pray faithfully for your grandparents. Pray faithfully for them. Glory to God. I, listen, here's what I need real quick. I need every man 65 and older to come on the stage. 65 and older. 60 every man, every male, 65 and older. Come on stage real quick. Help him up. Come on over here, Brother Starling. Yeah, yeah, we right here. Yeah, you stay right there. Stay right there. Amen. Amen. I just want you to see, I want you to see the wisdom that's on this stage. All of these men have lived at least 65 years on this earth. All of them are retired, right? Retired, retired, retired. Yeah. Semi, semi, you've probably retired twice by now, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> you, you retired, but you retired. Yeah, but you went back to work. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. But check it out. Check it out. 70 something? 70? 71. How you retire? You 71 and go back to work. He's not doing it because he, he, he has to. He does it because he wants to and because he can, because he's sharp. He ain't, lost, he ain't lost anything. He's still sharp. He's still sharp, and he can do that. Listen, can, can, I, can I tell you, can I give you the secret to growing old gracefully? Can I tell you the secret? It's just to live a righteous life. Just, just live right. Yes, sir. Live right. Live right, and the grace of God covers your life. God said, He said, "I'll give you, I'll give you long life. I'll, I'll extend your days." Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just live right before God. I say this to the aged. I say this to the aged. Your influence is greater than you may understand. 
I know sometimes it seems like you're talking and nobody's listening. But you need to know you have something to say. And we need to listen. How cool would it be? I need one, two, three, four, five. I need five teenage boys. Run up here real quick. Teenage boys. Come on, come on, come on. Teenagers, teenagers. Run. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. That's four. Here's one more. Come over here. Step over here just a little bit. You stand with him. You come over here. You stay right there. You stay right there. Brother Ray, come here. You go over there and get one of those guys. You stay right there. You stay right there with him. My man, you, you come here. No, no, no. You stay right there. You come over here. Now, what happens? What happens when the respect level is so much so that this man, although he really don't know him, he respects him as a father. And now he starts to pour into him. Do, do you think there's anything, 85, do you think there's anything an 85-year-old man can teach him about being a man? Come on, man. Can you imagine, can you imagine how much wiser he becomes by being associated with this man? By taking some time to talk to him, taking time just to sit at his feet and just allow him just to pour that wisdom into him. You know how much trouble he will keep him out of? This man, this man here is a walking miracle. Brother Stalin is a walking miracle. The stroke that he had, the doctor said people don't return from those. The stroke that he had, he's not supposed to be walking, talking. He's, not, he's supposed to be a paraplegic, the stroke that he had. But the grace of God. The grace of God. What happens? What happens when he teaches him about this cross that he's wearing? When he teaches him the real meaning of that cross, that that cross is not just something to put around your neck, son. When he teaches him. What happens? What happens? How does his relationship with God go to the next level? By being connected with him. Retired educator. Retired teacher. How does, you, you're in college, going to college? You're in college right now? Going to college? Okay, so, so how, does, how does that relationship change? How does how does his how is his life impacted? Get ready to go to college. Somebody's been to college. He's going. So so what can he tell him? How can his life be impacted by the relationship that he has with him? That's what honor looks like. That's what we got to teach our young men how to honor the aged, because there's something that we can learn. From them. Watch this. Uh -uh, uh -uh. Check this out. Check this out. Come on. Both of y'all. Both of y'all. Both of y'all. Come on. Come on. Both of y'all. Both of y'all. Both of y'all. Watch, 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 watch. watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Tired police officer. Retired from the Air Force. Cool dude. Maybe a hothead. He's slick with it. Look at him. You can tell. You can look at him and tell. You can look at him. You can look at him. But he in church. He's here. He's in church. He's here. He's here faithfully. He's in church. 
He's slick. You got to watch him. You got you to keep your foot on his neck. You got to watch him. But how is his life impacted by partnering with a man that says, look, let's talk about jail. <laughs> let's talk about handcuffs. <laughs> let's talk about it. <laughs> How is his life made better? How is his life made better? By teaching respect. And watch this. And the same thing should be happening with our senior women and our young women. The same thing. Same thing should be happening. If, if we could pair our senior women with our young women, we would see the attire of church change. No young people said a word. All the old people were clapping. Up. Yeah, Pastor Love, you right. We would see young ladies become more modest. Y'all can clap. It's okay. Y'all can clap on that. We would see young women become more modest. If we could just pair the two. That is what God is calling us to do. I don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to pray about that. And we're going to pray about this because this needs to happen. Because the Levitical law required it. Thank God we're no longer under the law, but we thank God for the principle. The principle still remains. The principle of honor still remains remains. Amen. We all give the Lord a great big round of applause. God bless y'all. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all. Thank y'all. Respect. Respect your elders. There's a, another elder that we are required to respect. The Bible calls him the Ancient of Days. Before time began, he was. He, he was, is, and is to come. He is the great I am. He is the prince of peace. Some call him the rose of Sharon, the lion of the tribe of Judah. My grandmother, they call her Aunt Laney or Mother Mama Love. She called him bridge over troubled water, baby. She called him bread. She said, baby, he's bread when I'm hungry. Water when I'm thirsty, baby. She said, baby, he'll wipe the tears from your eyes, baby. She said that he wiped the tears from your eyes, baby. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We are to honor the Lord with everything we have. Watch this. We also are to honor the Lord with our lives. Here's my question to you. If, are, you are you that are in this room, have you, have you given your life to Christ? Have you honored God with your life? If you haven't honored God with your life, hell is where you're going to spend eternity. But today, man, if you realize, man, you know what, Pastor Love, I heard the word. I don't know if something in that word that just stirred my heart. And I know I need to get my life right with Christ. And today I want to do that. Today I want to make it right. I need to be saved. We're going to help you all over this room. Here's what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do, we're all going to stand with you. On the count of three, I want all of you to stand with that person that needs to be saved. One, two, three. We're standing all over this house. Stand all over the house. Glory to God. Listen, that's step one. Now you're on your feet. Here is step number two. Step number two, while the saints are praying. Y'all know what we do during this time. While the saints are praying, here is step number two. For those of you that are in this room and you need to give your life to Christ, if you'll be bold enough just to lift that hand where you are, lift that hand high where you are and say, Pastor Love, it's me. I need to give my life to Christ. If that's you, we would love to pray for you. We would love to, to welcome you into this body of believers. If that's you and you would like to give your life to Christ, glory to God. If you would like to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior, God bless you. Will you bring them down? Bring them down. God bless you. Come.